and it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and today I might possibly have the cutest craft project ever for you. I mean seriously. I have so many fun little details to show you and um, basically we are going to be making sunflower front door stuffies which I think are a good flower for August through I don't know, September, early October. Um, they really are more of a summer flower, but people associate them with fall because of the color of them. Um, so I'm gonna show you everything. I'm gonna tell you what we're using. I have a whole bunch of different supplies. I'm gonna show you how to make a pattern. I'm gonna show you, this is one that's getting close to completion. We're gonna actually complete it. I'm gonna show you how to dye beads. I'm going to show you how you can make your own ribbons. Oh my goodness. I have so many fun things to show you. So as you're hopping on, say hello. Uh, sprinkle, sprinkle if you like this. Um, feel free to ask questions. Feel free to tag some friends. This is not a hard project. You don't have to be artistic. It's just a lot of steps. So at the very start here, I recommend that you grab a piece of paper. Okay. So this is where we're headed and we will finish this off. And I have in the background a bunch of stuffy door hangers that I've made in the past that I'll show you in a bit. But this, just so you know, this is where we're headed. Okay, let me set this aside. All right, um, and the main ingredient is canvas duck cloth. Okay, for this project I used white, but you can use cream, um, you could use painter's drop cloth. You could use really any kind of a, a thicker, sturdier fabric. So this is white canvas duck cloth that I picked up at Hobby Lobby when they had fabric on sale. And it's a really nice thickness, it's great. Um, and that's the main ingredient. Okay, oh, and also don't wash this. You only wash painter's drop cloth. This is canvas duck cloth. You may want to iron it, but do not wash it, okay? All right, so this is my pattern for my sunflower. And I'm all about breaking things down so they're easy to do. How did I have this folded? Okay, so I wanted my sunflower roughly to be 24 inches from point to point and side to side. So write down 24. And this is just your basic, where is it? I made it just with your basic roll of craft paper, brown craft paper, but you could make it out of um, grocery bags, paper grocery bags if you want, or really probably anything else. And to me, I wanted it to be pretty even the whole way around. So here's an idea for you. I fold, I folded my paper in half. Can you see that? And then I folded it in half again. And then I folded it in half again. And I drew with the Sharpie roughly where I wanted my center to be. And that was based on the diameter of, surprise, surprise, a paper plate. Um, and when you get it folded to this size, then you're just going to do two pretty equal points. Okay, does that make sense? Hopefully. So it's going to be 12 inches from here to here, but then it's doubled. So your final pattern is this size. 24 inches. I wrote it down in here. 24 inches from top to bottom, side to side. Okay, so that's how you make a pattern. And I don't have anything that I can share. I just freehanded this. Sunflowers, different species of sunflowers look so different. I didn't want a bunch of really long petals because those are kind of floppy. So we're creating the illusion of it. And then when I was done, I kind of drew the design on my pattern. Okay, so you want to cut two pieces at a time. 
a front and a back. And I'm just going to open up my piece. I almost need to go get some more. Um, No, I have to fold it the other way. Sorry. Of course, I don't want to waste any, but it is going to have to go all the way. Hopefully, I have enough. I usually make my patterns with computer paper. But this works just fine too. Okay, and I think this is gonna work. So then I'm just gonna put some pins into it. I'm gonna show you guys everything. I'm gonna tell you all the paint colors. Um, I'm gonna show, I did some cute little doodly doos. I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna show you how to dye your own beads. I'm gonna tell you about this new wire that I purchased at Walmart that's pretty cool. Um, and I have a bunch of other, ow, other things to show you. Okay, so I have it pinned on my piece of paper, roughly. And then I'm just going to trace it with the pencil. And there's no need for precision at all. Okay, I will tell you one thing. Uh, after you paint the front, it is gonna shrink a little bit, which means the back will be a little bit too big, but you can go ahead and glue that on and then just cut around the edges to trim it to the size of your front because when you paint them, they do shrink a little bit for some reason. Also, I'm gonna to tell you this tip. When I was making mine, I didn't mark what was the top and what was the bottom. And I had a hard time figuring out how to get my uh, pieces back together so they would make sense. I'm not even sure that I figured it out right. But um, anyway, so mark your top and your bottom. And you can just do that with a pencil. Okay, I have the whole thing traced. And I'm gonna put my pattern aside. And I don't know that you'll be able to see it, but it's traced on here. And now I do wanna pin my two sides together. We're not gonna do the whole thing. I'm just showing you the basics. Because I have been working all morning trying to get ahead a few steps so that you don't have to watch me cut stuff out for 20 minutes <laughs> or paint and paint dry okay so i'm just putting a pin at every point and then i will have my front and my back pieces all right, so then just cut them out and mark uh, on the inside, top, top, on the two insides and bottom, bottom, so you know how to put it back together. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside. And then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna paint it. Um, and when you paint canvas, it makes it a little bit thicker, so it will stand up better. So here's one that I have started the painting process and I used this Waverly Maze. 
acrylic paint matte finish. It says chalk, but it's acrylic paint. And um, I get mine at Walmart. So I used this, and then I used the black, which is called ink paint. All right, and I um, traced a paper plate in the center. I painted the yellow first, one coat, and then I painted the black. And what I want you to notice is that I didn't sweat it, and I think it looks pretty cute, actually, in, in the one that's closer to being finished. I did not sweat it to get that black all the way out to the yellow. Can you see what I mean? Okay. So, then the next thing is we want to give some definition or interest to this project. And there's so many things that you could do. Like I did, where is the other one? I did dots and dashes and I created this like hatch thing just by hand, but you could stencil the center as well. And this is what I would choose. It would be so absolutely adorable. It um, is a daisy pattern, but it could be perceived as sunflowers. So I would stencil this just on the center black part in white ink. And um, we're not gonna do that today, but this is an option. It would be super cute. You could also use my favorite stencil, which is the Victorian pattern and stencil that in white. But what we're gonna do is polka dots and definition. So I am using just a crummy chip brush. Um, these came from the painting department at Walmart. They're not very wide. And I'm gonna use a paper plate. I can find something that's not terrible. And we are going to, for the other one, I used this color, cashew. And I used this one, hazelnut. But for this one, we're gonna use white. And we might possibly use a little bit of black. I'm not sure. So let's start. Okay. I'm going to make my uh, artist area right here. And this Waverly paint, just so you know, it is super thick. I mean, super thick. So usually what I do is I'll plop some of it on a, on a paper plate and then I'll spritz it a couple times with distilled water because that's what I have in my spritzer. And then I'm going to mix it up. So what do you guys think so far? Hey Linda, hi Renee, hey Candace. You guys, if you're liking this project, um, please consider sprinkling it to your Facebook or Instagram or if you're in craft groups that allow other crafters videos to be on there, that would be awesome. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, so I just thinned it out a little bit and I'm going to put my brush in it. And then I'm going to tap some of that off because I'm not sure how it's going to come out. And we're just going to start doing some... I'll hold this up in just a second. Combined with, we're using my favorite today. Where is it? This. The Ink Chalk Paste Pen Pack um, from MagnoliaDIY.com. You guys, it, I feel like lately every project I make, I use these. So they're from magnoliadiy.com, and we're gonna be using those as well. So let's get this on. And I don't want each petal to be exactly the same. Okay. 
Can you see the motion that I'm doing? This is called dry brushing. You just put some of the paint on your credit brush and then I tap it off. So I'm dipping it in the paint and then I'm kind of tapping it off. And this is gonna dry really quick too. This one, I'm gonna do more black and white with the yellow. The other one is uh, more actual fall colors. But the great thing about this project, honestly, is that you can make it your own and totally do it how, whatever appeals to you. You don't have to do exactly the same thing as what I'm doing here. And I'm gonna show you a fun way to glue this together that will create some dimension. So, yeah, tons of ideas. Steffies are some of my favorite, favorite things to make. Okay, I'm gonna say that that is good. All right, and we're gonna let that dry for just a second while I show you some of the stuffies that I pulled out earlier. Okay, let's start with spring and Easter. And um, for Easter this year and last, I went crazy with this whole idea of carrots. And this is the cream colored can canvas deck cloth that you can get at any fabric store, including the Walmart where I live in their fabric department. So these are just some of the different ones. And see how these have the round circles? I'm gonna show you how to do that because we're gonna put them here. Oh, and this is one that I made with a fabric that I created using my um, Victorian pattern stencil. Okay, and then here's the big uh, carrot that is a door hanger. Isn't that cute? If, uh, if you didn't see this video, you can scroll back in my videos to uh, a month or two before Easter 2021. And I did multiple videos on this idea. Okay. Then let's go to fall. And this is my candy corn door hanger that I painted orange, yellow, and white. And then I stenciled it with these fall words. And then I used the same pens that we're gonna be using to do squiggle, dot, 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 squiggle, dot, 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 squiggle, dot, 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 and we built this bow. And I think the squiggle dot, dot, dots are really, really what makes it. But this is one of my favorite projects. Okay, and also for fall, I made this. And this is three different pumpkins kind of all stacked up on each other that I painted and then I stenciled them with white ink. And this is the fall stencil, this is the leopard stencil, and this is the fall pattern stencil. And then I used the same pens to do line, dot, 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 um, zigzag, line, zigzag, line, dot, 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 line. I mean, you can go crazy with that kind of stuff. Okay. Then, for Christmas, I made these. And they've been, they're a little scrunched because they've been in the closet in the bottom of a tub. But these are ornaments, in case you don't know what that shape is. They're ornaments that I painted and then I stenciled them. Like this one I stenciled with this Baby It's Cold Outside stencil, which is currently, if you're watching this live, um, mid-July, this is not, the stencil's not available yet. It will be back come mid-August. Anyways, so I stenciled it with blue ink. I used the silver pin to do line dot dot dot. I did blue and silver as my um, theme. I put some little bells on there and it's pretty cute, isn't it? Okay, and then the one I love the most is this one. It is an ornament also, and it says it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, 
which is one of the Christmas stencils that is being retired. I painted red, white, red. I'm gonna show you how to do these little bubbles in just a minute. We built this bow, and this is some heavy duty wire that I've not been able to find lately, this thick of a gauge. But, um, isn't it cute? Oh my word. And then I have a hundred others, because stuffies are some of my favorite things to do. But I don't have those handy right now. So I'm gonna throw my paintbrush in a tub of water. Let's get a little more white paint out. And I'm gonna show you how to do the bubbles. Oh, I shouldn't have thrown that in there so quick. Let's get another one. I'm gonna thin this paint out just a little bit. We're gonna glue this, these together in sections. So I don't know if that makes sense, but you'll see what I mean. And you could do this idea with almost any kind of a stuffy that you might be working on. Okay, and I purchased these. Looking for the different sizes. Okay. I purchased a set of these pouncers. They're just foam round brushes at Walmart. Um, this purple is the size we're gonna use, but you could do smaller or bigger. Um, it's completely up to you. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap it into my white paint here. We might need some more. Make sure the whole thing is covered well. And then we're randomly gonna do polka dots in this black center area. So let's do one just to get it started. The first one is the hardest. And don't worry, oh, yay! Don't worry if they're not perfect is what I was gonna say, but that one looks pretty darn good. So you wanna push your brush down, your, your pouncer thing, and then kind of twist it. That one was not as good. Okay. And I'm just doing random. There's no pattern here. Also, you could use the adorable polka dot stencil that you can get at magnoliadiy.com. Um, there's so many different ways that you could decorate the center. Okay, so I could continue adding more and possibly I will after I'm all done, but let's stop right there. All right, now let's use the pins, okay? And this is where it gets super duper fun. I'm gonna use a combination of white and black and these are ink, this is fabric, um, but you could really use the chalk paste. The ink ones in this set have the black body. The chalk paste have the white body. And these do last a very long time and they're like $15 for that set of eight of them. In my opinion, whether you use stencils or not, every craft closet could totally benefit from this. Okay, so I, here's where I'm gonna make it look like these are long sunflower petals. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is Prime my pin. There we go. And I'm just drawing a long line at the front of every petal. I'll hold this up in just a second. 
hey, this was just, this is just me. This is my own idea of how to do this. So if you have a better way to actually make it look like a sunflower, go for it. Um, this is just my way of achieving that. And I think it turned out pretty cute. So I'm gonna do these first and then I'll hold the whole thing up so you can see. If you need to, you can come back. Oh my goodness, thank you guys so much for all those stars. These pins are awesome. If you're interested, if you don't have them yet, say pins or link or something in the comments and I'll get you a direct link so that you don't have to hunt them down. I mean, I use mine, it feels like, every other day. Okay, so there is the start. Isn't it cute already and it's nowhere near finished? Okay, then I'm gonna do a little bit of a line on the other side of each one of these. I'll hold it up in just a second so you can see. Oh, I, did I smash my hand into that? Oh, no, I think I was just coloring over the top of some of that dry brushing. This project, when you include the stuffing, which I'll show you what I like the best, it's probably this is an under $5 project, but it's gonna look like something that you would buy and spend 60, $70 on or more. And you can say, I made it, which I think is so fun to do when somebody says, oh my gosh, I love your front door hanger. You can say, oh, thanks, I made it. getting there. Trish, I'll get you the link for the pins as soon as I'm done. Um, and anyone else who wants to ask questions or say something to me, I try to grab a few comments as I'm going along, but for the most part, my eyes and my concentration is down here and then explaining to you but I do want to let you know that I go back and I will read every single comment, every single one. So, um, so tell me what you think, feel free to ask questions, all that. Okay, I'm just going over a few of these to make them darker or more white. And we're gonna add black in just a second and it's gonna make a huge difference. Then I'm gonna tell you about the easiest way in the world to dye beads because I wanted a couple of beads on my hanger that are this same yellow. Um, so it just involves a little bit of this same paint and a Ziploc bag I mean, it's super easy. And then we're gonna glue the other one together. I don't know that this one will be dry fully in time, although these do dry pretty quickly. Do you remember what this looked like when I held it up just a few minutes ago before we did the dry brushing and before we started with the markers? It was cute, but
but there was nothing special about it. And now, oh my gosh. Okay, let's see, is there anything else that I really want to add to? Okay. And then I'm gonna do a little swoosh, like in the center. So look how cute. And once we add the black, stay with me. Oh my gosh. You're gonna just absolutely, well, you're not gonna die, but you're gonna think you are because it is so cute. And this weekend, I have been thinking about other stuffy ideas for front door hangers that we could make. And I have a ton of ideas. So if you haven't followed this page yet, you should. Um, and turn on your notifications. Because I have tons of ideas uh, of projects. And... I would love to show all those ideas to you. And then you can take those ideas and put your own spin on them in your own colors, your own style. Just looking to see, are there any of these that are super light? If you have time, which I don't want to take the time because I don't want you guys to have to just sit there and wait. But do I think it does look better if you go over your lines two times. Okay. Okay. I'm going to have to get a screenshot of this where it started and where it's gonna end up. Okay, so I'm gonna put the white away. And this is what we were using if you just topped on. These are called ink and chalk paste pens from magnoliadiy.com. And, um, but I can get you a direct link. These are like around $15 for eight of them. And I use them all the time, all, all, all the time. Okay, so now I'm gonna use the black. Just gonna prime it a little bit. Remember how to, and I'm doing this on the left side. So I'm gonna do a little line, dot, dot, dot. It's just to the side of the I'm not going to be smooching everything up. And I do want each one to kind of be different. So you can compare. This last one I did, I did line dot, line dot, line dot, line dot, dot, dot. Okay, was I right? Is this the cutest project ever? And I haven't even stuffed it yet. Oh my gosh. I think it works best, really, if you just kind of work like this, flipping your, your piece each time and not trying to do a whole petal all at once.
you would like the pen, the link for the pins, I'll get you that as soon as I'm finished. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so cute. So, if you like this project, please consider sprinkling. That is the like number one thing that you can do to help my little DIY dreaming thing here grow. And um, just let your friends and family see some of the projects that you are liking. Every time I hold it up, it's cuter and cuter and cuter and cuter. Slam some hearts if you're liking this. And I will try to come back, unless you guys could help me with this, and get some screenshots of the different stages. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do this center. All right, I know someone will ask, is this something you could put outside? Yes, absolutely. On a covered uh, front porch, back door, back porch kind of thing. This is not going to hold up well if it's getting rained or snowed directly on, but it would hold up just fine because I have something to show you to do with it at the end. Um, it would hold up just fine if you put it on, hung it up outside, like on your front door, if that area is covered. <laughs> okay, why am I so tickled? I don't know, I just am. Okay, let's do the last little bit here. And I'm gonna do it so it kinda makes sense. I'm gonna do these ones a little bit less with all the triple dots and stuff. I am so glad I decided to do the polka dots in the center. I might possibly come back and add some more. I don't know. Tell me what you think. Does it need more polka dots? Oh my gosh, this is so cute. And now that you see the whole thing, does it bother you this area where I didn't, uh, I wasn't, I was kind of messy and I didn't get all the way to the edge? It is so cute. Now we could do, we could build some fabric to make bows to go with this one. And these are just a couple that I was just fiddling around with earlier. And this one I did because I have that, that cross hatch on the other one. Okay, this is a strip of the same white canvas duck cloth. I painted messy fashion it white. And then I just did the little stripes in black paint. And then this is one that I painted white. And then I used the same, well, a smaller little pouncer to make the yellow polka dots. 
so you can see there's so many cute things that you could do. Okay, let's go. And this one already has oops, its little back all cut out and ready to go. Okay, so let's come back to this one. And it has the back on it, although it's not on there very good. I'm gonna definitely have to trim this one up a little bit. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna Okay, I'm gonna lift this up and we're gonna do it glue around this and we're gonna stuff the center first. I'm just looking to see, will I be able to see where that is? Yes, I will. Okay, and we are using a Sherbonder low temperature cool shot mini cheapo cheapo under ten dollars glue gun you don't need anything fancy i'm definitely not using uh high temperature for this kind of a project i'm just gonna lay down my glue kind of right around the the circle. We're not going to be, you know, dummies and glue, glue the whole thing. So I will stop up at the top. And give myself room to stuff it. Okay, I don't know if you can see from the back, so I've just glued around here. Now, let's put a little bit of fluff in here, just to have it kind of do a little bit of a poof. I'm not gonna fill it super full. And this is the um, fluff that I like. It's polyfill, crafter's choice. Um, dry polyester packing fiber fill, ideal for doll making, 20 ounces. I get this at Walmart, but I'm imagining you could get this kind of thing anywhere. And the, um, the thing is, if you don't have any polyfill, but you have a pillow that you don't love, you could take your pillow apart. I'm going to just pull the fibers apart just a little bit on my polyfill before I stick it in. This makes it so that it does lie a little bit smoother and it's a little bit less lumpy when you kind of pull those fibers apart. It's not a pillow, it's a door hanger. Oh, maybe you're asking me about taking up a pillow apart to use the inside of it. You could do that. I've also in a pinched used scrunched up white grocery store plastic bags. Okay, so let's start stuffing. Where's my hole? I left a big enough hole that I can actually get my hand into this. Pushing my polyfill out to the edges here first. I'm going to start sticking it in the center. So I'm so curious what you guys think. This is what it is, in case you just hopped on. And I made another one too. Um, 
the, these are not difficult to make. Um, they're not even super time consuming. It's just being patient enough to wait while one layer of something dries before you move on to the next thing. That's my hardest part. Okay, I'm gonna put just a teeny bit more in and then we'll close that hole. And we'll start on the next area. Okay. okay, then the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to try to, oops, I see a spot that I missed. No, I didn't miss it. I am going to try to create some dimension in the little points on my pillow as well. So, I'll show you what I'm doing in just a second. Shauna says she love, love, loves them. Please put the name in the fabric. Okay, I'll tell you right now. It's called Cotton Duck. It's um, it's like a thick cotton that's pretty sturdy. And I got this, this is white. I picked it up at Hobby Lobby. You can get the cream sometimes at, um, at Walmart too. I think I'm going to stuff each section as I'm sort of going along. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, I did a line of glue. I did a line of glue going, following this, and then following this, and then I'm going to stuff it from the side. And you can make these as fluffy or as flat. Does it come in a roll or on a back? It comes in a roll. Um, and it's the really thick stuff. Don't buy, um, what is it called? There's another, muslin. Because it has to have some, some structure to it, some, some heaviness to it to work. And muslin is just way too thin. So when I get um, canvas duck at Walmart or at Hobby Lobby or Joann's, I bought it there too, it's always on the roll in the fabric department. Let's see, we need more. I can fiddle around with the placement when I'm when I have it all filled. Okay, so there's one point. And now I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to follow this line and then close it up and we'll stuff it from the other side. a little bit hard to do because I can't really see where I am but I'm gonna make this work do you have an auction for my crafts no I don't I usually hang on to them because then I can do things like I just showed everyone these ideas from last year. <laughs> These door hangers that we made last year. So no, I don't, I don't do the auction thing. Um, how much do you pay for what? I don't know what you're asking for. I, and I don't sell my crafts either. You could use burlap too, yes. 
could for sure use burlap. A lot of people have like an allergy to all the burlap fiber, so. Um, and I don't like how it gets that burlap dust everywhere. This cotton duck is great to work with. This is the first time I've stuffed anything doing this idea of doing kind of separate little compartments. So we'll see <laughs> if I like it or not. I don't know. There might be an easier way to do this. I don't know, I haven't figured that out. So if you have an easier way to do that. Thank you, Susan, for sprinkling. I so appreciate it. And thank you to everyone who did stars. Wow, that is so super generous of you. I really appreciate it. spray your burlap with Febreze. Does that keep the, the fibers from... from flying everywhere? Might. Yeah, so I get this question all the time and let me just answer. Why don't I answer all the questions as we're going along? Well, it's hard to be the camera person, the audio <laughs> person, the crafter, the um, directions explainer, and be the comment reader and comment answerer all at the same time. So I do go back and read everyone's comments. And as much as I can, I answer every question. There are a lot of times where the answers are in the video. <laughs> And I'm like, well, did you even watch the video that you're asking questions about? And I don't know, sometimes I guess people don't. But I'm like, I gave you the exact measurements in the video. But um, yeah, I read every comment because that's important to me. If you guys take the time to write something, I want to respect that. Uh, Leota says if you do everything at once, you do a poor job. I would agree with that. Another thing I never do, since I have some time while I'm fluffing to just blab, is I never just sit down and start crafting with no idea of where I'm going. Like today, I have spent oh, probably three, more than three hours preparing for this video. Preparing this one, figuring everything out. So, because I want your experience to be amazing. And I don't, I really view this DIY dreaming more like um, a, a crafting class where I'm teaching you how to do something than just we're, you know, blabbing and crafting. So I, I want to have everything all ready to go for you. Oh my gosh. And I need to remember not to forget the hanger. So let's do something with that right now. Okay, this is this wire that I picked up at, Do or at, uh, at Walmart. It is 18 gauge. This one's black. I got silver. I also got gold and it was 98 cents. It was in the craft department at Walmart near the jewelry section, like the beads and stuff. So this is what we're going to be using. This is pretty good gauge wire. I mean, it could always use something even better, but this will work. 
Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of bend the ends of it. Okay, and how I made, where did my plastic bag go? Well, I don't know. How I made my beads was I just put them in a Ziploc bag, the, the plain, uh, you know, wood beads. And I, I poured a little bit of this paint in there and then I just kind of mushed it around with my fingers and poured them out on a paper plate. And they aren't like super smooth, but they're the same color and they took no time at all. So I think that that works. And my plan was to have my hanger look something like this. So let me figure this out for just a second. I'm gonna roll up these ends so that I can glue them down before I end up accidentally forgetting. I think that will work. And I'm going to glue them at, on these two points. So let me flip this over. And we're going to glue them down on these two points right here. And then I can fiddle around with how the wire is shaped later. Let's put a huge pile of glue right there. This is where it's really good to be using low temperature hot glue because that did not kill me. But if I have just put my fingers into a pile of hot, hot glue, oh my gosh, that would be really smart. And I would probably have big blisters to show for it. So that's why I use a low temperature hot glue gun. And these cool shots, um, I feel like they are maybe even a little cooler than a regular low temperature hot glue gun. And they're not expensive at all. So when I get to those two points, I will smoosh my fabric together. Now I won't forget the hanger, which was definitely a possibility. Okay, let's start. We'll go in this direction. Oh, I need to flip it over to the other side. That's what the deal is. And I'm sort of doing these little compartments uh, for each petal. Did I make my hot glue pouncer? You know what? One of my followers sent this to me like three, four years ago. I wish I could remember who it was. If it was you, I really appreciate it. These are those little finger protector things that you can get at Dollar Tree. I have some somewhere. Well, I don't know where they are right now. But anyways, they're just pink and they go on your finger. And sh this person put it on a little wood dowel for me. Very sweet. And yeah. It works great. Okay, let's go in through the side to stuff that one. And I 
know this has taken a little while. I'm sure glad that I pre-prepared some of the steps. It's gonna to be totally worth it. What else did I wanna show you? I showed you the make your own ribbon for a bow idea. I'll talk about that again in just a second. where they got this dowel because it's a pretty fat one um, but it was super nice of that person and if it was you please tell me because uh, I don't remember it's been so long I know I wrote back to the person right away saying thank you so much I love it but I don't remember who that was right now We're gonna have some trimming to do. Can you see? Uh, oh, and look, you can see more of the dimension on the back of it. It's gonna be super cute. Okay, Helga, that's a great tip. Helga says that she got some of these little finger protectors and she glued it on the end of a foam brush. Brilliant. Brilliant. So that's an option you guys could do if you want to make something like that. Who's had a bad hot glue burn? If you have, tell me in the comments. I'm gonna show you where we're getting to in just a second. Isn't it cute? What do you guys think about those little compartments? I think they're adorable. I'm excited about this project. Okay, well. Well, I do have one in the center. I think somebody was just asking. Becky says she's had several hot glue burns. You have a scar on the you know what, uh, my daughter-in-law, she's a sweetheart, she has a really bad scar on her arm from where she burned it with a, um, with those heat uh, straightener, what do you call those things? I have never used one. Uh, anyways, and it really hurt. <laughs> and so hot, hot glue is also super painful. And it's just not worth it. I am not willing to take that chance anymore when I can use a perfectly good, super affordable, low temperature hot glue gun that you can get this at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, any craft store. The brand is Sherbonder. It's a mini. It has a cord. It's nothing fancy and it's called a cool shot. And I do use their glue too. Their glue sticks. Okay, we're almost there. And I have to think, this is going to be a little bit of a mental puzzle to figure out how am I going to do the last one. I guess I'll leave the bottom of it open on one side. So 
so that I can stuff this last little compartment. And I'll show you again the other one that we did. And coconut oil is great when you get a hot burn. Yeah. Crafting is dangerous business, right? I also think, you guys, I know this is the truth, that it is super good for your brain to craft. And as we grow older, I don't know, those connections between the cells in our brain get a little fuzzy. But when you are crafting, you are reconnecting all those links. And it's good for your physical health, and it's also good just for your mental health. So I don't look at crafting as being something frivolous to do. Um, I think it's super fun, of course, but it's also really good for you. This is so cute. Okay, let me show you. And I'll probably bend this hook up some at the top. See the back? You can't really appreciate the dimensional aspects of it looking at it on a video. But, okay, now the only thing that we would still want to do is come back and trim up some of these areas gotta do something so those don't keep sliding from one side to another. The areas where it didn't match up quite right. I'll come back and trim those up. I am so excited about it. Oh my gosh, I cannot even believe how cute it turned out. Okay, let me show you the other one and then I'll show you the stuffies one more time and um, then I'll, let's see. Okay, these are my other stuffies. A few of them. I have many, many more. Here's this one. This is the one we did. And it looks very different from that one, don't you think? They're both super cute. They both didn't, they're both like under $5 projects, probably well under $5. Um, what I think, seriously, gives these that extra something are these pins. And doing squiggles and dot, dot, dots and that kind of thing. I think that adds so much. Um, so if you don't have a package of these pins, yeah, there are like eight of them for, it's gold, silver, black, and white in ink, and gold, silver, black, and white in chalk paste, and um, they're like $15, or maybe it's 16 but um, they're a great deal, they last a super long time, and these are just so super versatile. You can get these at magnoliadiy.com, no space, all smushed together, or ask me in the comments, and I'll be glad to i get you a direct link. This is going to be cute. Okay, so here's the pumpkin I made last year, which was three separate little pumpkins that I connected. And I painted these, and, and I used one of the MagnoliaDIY.com stencils. This was the fall leaf. This was the leopard pattern, fall leaf, and white ink. And then I did zigzag lines and dot, dot, dots and fun stuff. This one is a candy corn and I painted it orange, yellow, and white. And then I stenciled it with this really cute fall word stencil and some black ink. And then I did these little squiggles and dot, dot, dots on this one. Um, this was a one I did last year for Christmas, which is a little smooched right now. But I painted it white stenciled it with some blue ink and this super cute stencil. And then I used the silver one 
to do lines and I used some silver bells and and then this is like one of my favorites it's an ornament in case you're wondering what is that shape you can see here's the top of the ornament um, and it says it's beginning to look like Christmas and we made these little dots the same as we did for these and maybe I'll come back and put something inside of them See how I have something inside of these little bubbles? I don't know, I'll have to decide. Um, okay, and then here are my carrots. And I have, I have mason jars. I mean, I have all kinds of stuffies. This was a carrot door hanger. I did the little bubbles in black. And then here are some little bowl filler stuffies. And this one I made using the Victorian pattern stencil and some orange ink from magnoliadiy.com. So there's so much you could do. And I know this has been a very long video, but if you um, are watching now and you missed the beginning, I'm about to be finished. You can go back and watch it on replay anytime to get all the particulars, the measurements, what I used, what the colors of paint are, everything. Cause I went through absolutely every step there. And um, if you haven't already followed DIY Dreaming, please do that and check up here, if you're watching on Facebook, to see if you've um, turned on your notifications. If you're watching on YouTube, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and like this video. If you want to see what's coming up next, you want to see pictures of these completed and my projects for the rest of this week, do a this or a this or say something to me in the comments and those things somehow through the magic of Facebook and their algorithms make it slightly more likely that Facebook will actually serve you my content. But if they don't, you can come back here anytime you want. Just type in DIY Dreaming in your search box on Facebook and then click on the videos tab and you can scroll down, 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 down. All the way about four years and several thousand videos and I have everything labeled. Um, so you can go back and watch whenever you want, whatever you would like when it's convenient for you. As long as Facebook is still a thing, my videos will all be there and they're all labeled. What's next? I'm not sure what is next, but did you guys see this project? That was that Dollar Tree tin. I have a bunch of things that are um, partially completed. So anyways, hope that you liked these projects and I would love to have you Come back again tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day. Let me know if you want links for the pins or for any of the stencils that I showed you too. Um, and let me know if you have any questions and yeah. Okay, have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you guys later.